Hi, I'm SBS from Averlights and I'm really excited to introduce the D9 Next Generation Visual Canvas Control Consoles. In this video, we'll take a look at the custom hardware in detail, the Synergy media integration, uh, and how all of these new innovations improve programming workflow and the creative process. So we use the very finest materials and manufacturing techniques when producing the D9. An example would be that each of the panels is machined from a single piece of aluminium, allowing us to work the panel very precisely without creating any distortion. And this allows us to flush mount all of the screens on the console, providing better ergonomics and a more premium feel. So let's look in more detail at some of the hardware features of the D9. Uh, starting over in the playback section, we've got two banks of 15 motorized Penny and Giles playback faders, and also two banks of 15 optical rotary encoders. All of these faders, whether they be linear or rotary, have an 11 segment LED indicator right next to them so that you get an instant uh, overview of all of the levels on your console. And at the top of the console, another two banks of 15 rotary encoders um, with function keys. And because they're RGB, the halo color for that item tracks through to the interface, meaning that it's really easy to group together different controls of different types um, for your performance. So everything on the D9 is labeled exactly where you expect it. So playbacks are labeled on the screen in perfect alignment with the hardware. And then for example, for our macro and executor keys in the playback section, they have a dedicated screen to label them right above them so you always know exactly where your macros are. Um, moving down the console, our T-bar also has a dedicated screen so that we can see the status of our scene master. And finally, our level attribute wheel also has a dedicated screen with it so that whichever bank of attributes I have assigned to my main attribute wheels, I always have visibility on my levels. So the button choice on a console is absolutely crucial to provide a great user experience. We decided to use two different types of button for the D9 because there are two distinct jobs being done by those buttons. The first one for the flash keys, timing is everything. So we use a very short travel CNK switch with positive haptics. So there's absolutely no mistake as to when the key has been pressed. We also used a slightly longer travel, softer touch Cherry MX low key for our programming buttons. This allows us to provide RGB backlighting for all of the function keys and also a more comfortable programming experience. So a key piece of feedback from programmers regarding our previous consoles was that they really missed having a physical keyboard for labeling and entering data. So we listened to what they said. Uh, we included a keyboard made up of exactly the same keys that we use in the programming section so that the feel and the backlighting perfectly match the programming section of the console. So one of the new pieces of hardware on the D9 is the T-Bar. Uh, we've introduced the T-Bar to further enhance our Scene Master functionality. The Scene Master allows you to make changes to the active playbacks and changes in the programmer and then execute those all to live over a manual fade time or a pre-timed fade time. So in this example, I'm gonna enter into our preset mode. I'm going to change the media server layer that's outputting to the screen. And I'm also gonna select it and change the video content. And then when I'm ready to cut that all to live, I'm just gonna move the T-bar and it's gonna to transition to that new look as I move the T-bar. So the top section of the panel has a 56 degree range of movement and is continuously adjustable. And once the lever is released, it's really, really rock solid. Uh, one of the really nice little touches in the console is the reading light built into the front panel for set list, scripts and things like that. As the D9 is designed to be the hub of your lighting and media system, 
Uh, we include a Luminex network switch, which offers power over Ethernet and all of their VLAN grouping. We offer a quad optical con output, SMPTE in and loop out, support for two external touchscreens, GPIO connector for dry contact closures, and a true one mains connector. We also have LED indicators all over the back panel to help with troubleshooting. So we wanted the D9 to be as much about media integration as it is about lighting control. Our Synergy feature set is supported better than ever in the D9 hardware. First of all, we've got a huge amount of screen real estate, which means that we can uh, manage content. So I'm going to be able to upload content here from the console to the media server. At the same time as managing the connection between the console and the media servers, previewing my media content, as well as live visualization and previewing of the final video mix. Synergy provides lots of powerful tools to allow you to line up your fixtures with your video content. So here we can see an overlay of the video canvas on top of our fixture layout. So the three small screens at the top of the console were designed very much with media in mind. Um, in this mode, they're showing me NDI previews. And if I tap on the screen, it shows me all the available NDI feeds. Currently, these are all coming from my AI server as they're automatically generated via Synergy. But this would show me any available NDI streams on the network. So this could be um, preview cameras or even um, other video feeds that are, that are part of your show system. And this helps to greatly simplify your front of house control position. If I decide that I want something other than media on there, I can add other workspaces from the Titan system as well. We've been able to unify the layout of the three main screens by moving the prompt and the soft key menu to this screen in the center. So the D9 features a dedicated master QLIS control area comprised of nine control buttons for both operating and editing your list and two motorized faders. These two faders uh, offer intensity for the list on the first fader and either effect rate or manual crossfade on the second fader. The programming section features RGB backlit keys which allow us to highlight relevant functions, as well as a brand new programming screen. At launch, this is dedicated to our attribute editor, which is perfect for controlling media servers and complex fixtures. We also have five attribute control wheels plus a level wheel. This is dedicated to dimmer intensity by default, but can be assigned to any attribute you like again, to speed up the control of complex fixtures. We kept the button layout as close to the layout on the Sapphire and our other consoles as possible, but with the addition of a few extra keys to speed up programming. For example, the wheel allocation buttons mean that instead of scrolling through a menu, we can instantly swap from attribute control to attribute time control. So the D9 offers 32 universes of DMX output from the unit itself, expandable with our TitanNet processors, in conjunction with cutting edge media integration, live 3D visualization, all behind professional quality hardware. And finally, the D9 hardware is available in two sizes. So this is the D9 330 with three main screens and 30 playback faders. And we also offer the D9 215. So that's two main programming screens and 15 faders, but no reduction in the number of channels output or any of the feature set. So to get your hands on a D9, please visit us online, contact Avalites directly or get in touch with your local Avalites distributor.